too. Um, and that's on every single album I would come see you. So, nah, I wouldn't get tired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I'm definitely going to tour a lot. I'm definitely going to tour a lot. I want to. My daughter's so young that she doesn't really need to be five years of touring. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Ed, for sharing. And by the way, um, I don't think that it's a problem getting older. You're doing great. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Ed. It's J. Lu from Hong Kong. Good. Nice to meet you. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Oh, perfect, yeah. okay. So um, thank you so much for jumping on this call with everyone. Um, we have so many questions for you and really excited about your new album. I can see on Hong Kong, the top charts. I mean, your song First Times is already on there as well. So that's amazing. Um, that's either that or the top charts. I'm really nervous right now, but yeah. Um, we want to talk about first times. So could you share with us your first Asia World Tour stop? Which country was that? And which local food did you eat that just blew you away? Oh, I think you know, I think the first place in Asia I ever went was Japan. I remember going there in oh, I love Japan. 2012. Yeah, that was the first time. And I remember, I think I only went for like two days. I was playing Fuji Rock Festival. And I remember staying in... Uh, a hotel for like a day and then and then and then we lit we were basically just on this like promo trail but the first uh where did, we, where did i go i can't remember the first date on the divide world tour we, we did a hell of a lot of asia and um yeah i think probably do you know the, what's your the, favorite food don't uh, tell me you had fish and chips <laughs> no 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 do you know what do you know what i loved about asia is every single country had their own different curry um and it was that each place was like a different delicacy but i'm a, i'm a big spice fan so being able to go places and um try different spices was 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 great obviously like um you know there's 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 other other amazing delicacies too but yeah i had a lot of fun trying out the different curries so you also would would you so when you were in japan would you try the you know the sashimi that people have to sign off like just in case like there's like five uh, steps yeah, that I did you that. I the did that yeah. yeah, fugu, fugu. I had that. Um, do you know it's it's all right. It's all right. It's kind of it doesn't really taste it? of anything, but yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, I tried it. Um, but I my favorite place to go in Japan is um, just like any uh, sushi place that is. You there's actually a great one in um, Hong Kong now as well. But where you go and you basically sit sit down. There's no menu and the chef just put stuff in front of you oh, and then yeah. you just eat, oh eat, eat. and then when you're done you say stop yeah yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm a cancer but there's um yeah. an amazing one that's in england that's just uh the chef has just moved out to hong kong actually so i'm um excited to go to hong kong to try that oh yeah we would love for you to have you again in hong kong thanks ed for sharing thank you so much nice one so i think we'll have questions from fans now. Oh. V, your mic is off. V. Oh, your mic's your mic's off. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for all of the you know honest um, answers and your answers are just so relatable and it's really fascinating whenever hear you sharing in the interview we really appreciate that um and looking at the facebook live chat right now we are crazy about you know the, the appearance of you here and we have collected a lot of great questions um and ashwin is going to take on all the questions asian fans really want to know are you in ed amazing yeah yeah i'm in so in <laughs> okay so the first question is from vietnam not a specific person, but the Ed Sheeran fan club in Vietnam, one of the biggest fan clubs in our country. Um, and they ask, what is your, what is Lira's favorite track? Um, that's a good point, uh, question. I think the one she actually like moves a lot to and dance, because she, she, she walks about now. So the one that she likes the best probably would be Shivers. 
that's the one you I actually see her move to. But um, it's hard to tell because I've had the album just on on loop, and she's sort of. I really want her to just take it in, you know. So basically, so basically every song on the album because it's equally Hopefully, wonderful. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm I'm basically trying to make her a fan before she uh, realizes that I'm not cool. <laughs> and you're so humble of it. I mean, yeah, that's wonderful. And another question is from Korea, and this is uh, Kim Ki Chin. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Um, she asked, "Do you have any plans for a concert in Korea?" I'm a big fan of you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah I, well, I'll be doing. Probably one, two, or maybe even three legs in in Asia. So I will definitely be coming. Uh, I'm going to try and come come everywhere. Do you know I've never um, probably been to um, Vietnam either, and I'd really really like to go there. That's my my manager Stuart's top place that he wants to go to. So we're we're going to take him there on holiday at some point. But I really want to go and um, um, do a show there too. But yeah, I would say realistically. Probably the end of 2023 would be when we were coming to to Asia because I have to let the you know the the, the pandemic still a huge thing worldwide and I don't want to um, make plans that aren't realistic. If that makes sense. That's definitely a good news for all the Asian fans in general and Vietnamese fans in specific. We are waiting for you, Ed. Please come. Thank you. Yeah. No. Definitely. And um, one more question is from Thailand. Patra V. Sirun Disuk. Um, she asks, will you tour with your band we saw on Tiny Desk? If yes, how would you think things would be different from your one mentor since there will be a lot so more a lot more people on the road? How it would be different? Um, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't ever tour with that many um, musicians yet. I, I think I think what I really loved about that tiny desk uh, was just how different it was. And I think um, I actually spoke to Adam, the the guy that's that set, set up the band, because I think it'd be cool to do the the whole of the album, you know, track one, two, three, four, five to track 14 with them for like a one off special. But um, yeah, I if I do if I tour with musicians. It won't be like a lot of music. I still love sort of creating my sounds myself. So if it, if I did do it, it'd be like a drummer and uh, uh, someone on keyboards, like probably that and try and create sounds doing that. It's gonna be a huge flat blast. And as you're in, what you do is just awesome, really cool. We appreciate that. And we know that a lot of more fans are, you know, eager to ask your questions. He's back to For the sure. other host. Thank you. All right, Ed, it's me again from the Philippines. I'm going to be asking you some questions from the Philippines yeah. and Singapore. But um, last night, I was totally flexing on my Instagram and my Twitter and Facebook that I was going to be talking to you today. And I got so many questions. I could only narrow it down to two. And the first one is from Benedict Peñalita. And he said, what are the things that led you to explore making music in all the different genres? like you do and that he says I hope you answer my question and we love you Ed I hope you're doing well that's Thank from you. Benedict that's very um so so I grew up listening to sort of genre based bands that I was into so if I was into a certain genre I would only listen to those bands that were in that genre and then I'd get into another genre and then I would only listen to those acts that were in that genre and then as I got older I was sort of that's quite a, a restrictive way of listening to music because I, as I've got older, I realized that genres actually don't exist at all. And it, there's, there's two things that music can be. It's either good or bad. And like, I want to make as much good music as I can uh, and try out different things. And whether that is making a dance song or making a, a rock song or make a rap song or make an R&B song, like I just want to make good music. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I never want to be in the, 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 the singer songwriter box is quite a re restrictive box because re realistically it just has to be like acu acoustic guitar and then maybe a band sometimes. And that for me is quite boring. So I, I'm, I'm excited making songs like Bad Habits and, and Shivers and Overpass Graffiti because it's, it's different to what I've done before, if that makes sense. 
I feel you completely. Art is art, music is music. There are no rules and you don't have to be in anybody's box. So um, For sure. perfect answer. <laughs> Another question is from Singapore from Vanessa Mostafa. I hope I said her name properly, but she said, apart from being sonically different from your previous albums, uh, Equals feels very much like a tribute to love and life, even a celebration of it. What's the story behind the conceptualization of this album? Um, well, it, the, the concept sort of came very, very last minute, I think. I, uh, originally, I was just writing. So, I mean, Divide and Multiply are basically just the best songs that I wrote in that time period. And they, I just put them on an album and it was just an album of songs that I thought were good. Whereas this, this one, towards the end, I actually took off some great songs that, that were on it because they didn't fit in with the theme. And I just noticed probably around May this, this year that there was a theme running through the songs that was sort of family, love, life, loss. And um, yeah, I, I essentially just took off the songs that didn't make sense on the track listing and, and then left it as is. And it, um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's the first album since Plus, I think that has plus is very much there's a consistent theme throughout it of 18 year old boy moves to London, breaks up for the first time and uh, is trying to figure out who he is as an 18 year old. And this one is very much one theme as well and cohesive. And uh, yeah, I like it. Is it safe to say your next album, Subtract or Minus, is already set with all the good extra songs that got left behind? Uh, yeah, well, actually, no songs got left behind. Um, so I'm going to be repackaging equals next year with uh, the, the, the song that there's one song that was going to be the second single that was like really good, really big, uh, but it just didn't fit in theme wise. So that'll be coming out next year. Um, I've done uh, a song with Pokemon that's going to be coming out next year as well. That's uh, oh really, really great and very, very exciting. And um, yeah, there's I next year is a year of fun for me like there's no i don't want to be like crafting an album or i'm just going to be releasing mm -hmm. songs that i like so there'll be lots and lots of releases next year of different you know, different collaborations different songs blah 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 and then i think the year after is when the final album of the five symbols will come out they're just going to be living life next year. But since you did bring Pokemon up, I'm going to milk it. Sorry, other hosts. <laughs> um, you did a collaboration with a Korean um, group, uh, BTS. Are you looking yeah, forward yeah, to yeah. collaborating with any more K-pop artists? Hopefully Astro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm open to, 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 to anything. What I loved about working with BTS, because I've, I've done two songs with them. Uh, the first song we did was in Korean and they've done a, 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 a Japanese version of it as well. And I just love working on songs that aren't necessarily my language. It, it makes it like really fun and, 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 and interesting. And I really loved doing Permission to Dance with them. Uh, yeah, I'd, make, I'd be open, to, I'd be open to, to, to anything. And it doesn't just like I'm a big fan of K-pop. I also love Mando Pop. I love J-pop. There's like so many... There's so many, so much scope to do a lot of things. So yeah, I, I'd be, I'd definitely be open to that. That's awesome to hear. Thanks for answering my questions. And you are a light. Thank you. So thank you for all that you do. Other hosts, you thank got you it. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, it took so long. Thank you. <laughs> no, Denise, I think your questions are worth it. Thank you. <laughs> but now I'm not going to milk it. I'm not going to take more of your time, Ed. Um, I'm just going to go right off of that. This is from Indonesia. Uh, from Talista Putri. She says, hi, Ed. What would be a good theme song for your life right now? Lots of love from Indonesia. Um, good theme song. I'd, mm -hmm. I don't know, really. I, don't, I, I think, because I, my, my life has, uh, I, would say, I would say a song like Tides, um, which is the first song on 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 the album is very album. reflective of how my my life. Fizz because it's sort of the verses are very chaotic and the chorus is literally middle of nowhere. There's probably two hundred people that live in my my village and it's so calm here. And everything is just right. chilled, and I can go 
go for a walk with my daughter no one notices I can go to the pub well obviously not now with COVID but like I everything here is so relaxed and then I when I step out of my little sanctum here it's chaos mm -hmm. I go to London and like full-on work everyone notices where where I go and it's just but it's the same same as if I was traveling doing promo and anywhere but I really like the ability of being able to turn it on and turn it off rather than just living in chaos the whole time I completely agree, especially with touring for so long. You just want to 